Welcome to the Audio Origami Unipivot Arm Setup Instructions. Now what we're going to be doing today is uh, looking at the setup of the uh, arm on different types of turntable bases. This will give you a good idea how to assemble the arm and also how to use the protractors that come uh, with the arm as well, plus some of the options that we offer uh, during the manufacturing process for you. Okay, so with your box, you can see inside you've got your instructions, uh, your protractor instructions, uh, protractor uh, alignment tool, set of Allen keys, and uh, stroboscope, and your um, alignment protractor guide. So we take them out, just put them aside just now. You lift your foam off carefully, and inside the box, what you've got is all your components. There's some hidden sections as well and uh, underneath these you, you might find uh, various components or little extras so have a look and underneath this one you've got your rear weight. So we're ready to basically take the arm out. We're going to take the foam stuff out first and carefully remove both parts, the wand and the base section. Now to remove the wand section carefully lift the finger lift and put your other finger around at the back of the arm and just gently tease it out of the, the foam. So your little plug is there, hedge hill end here with your tags, they're underneath. So carefully put this away and we'll talk about that in a wee second. Now the rear weight's in here, you just carefully pull that out. It's very slippy so use two hands to put that aside. And the base section comes out fairly easily. There's a little cover over the top of the bearing area and the external cable comes with it. And we can carefully put this aside. This little cover you can take off, it's just for protection. And we'll talk about that in a few seconds as well. Uh, there's some extra bits in here you might find useful. We've got some silicon oil for the top of the bearing, which is an optional thing you can do. You can put a little bit of silicon on the top of the gemstone. We'll look at that in more detail. Uh, I've also got some head shell washers, which uh, you can use to protect your head shell from getting scratched. We've also got little mounting bolts, head shell spirit level, and some little cable ties as well. So you can put all these carefully away while we look at uh, how we're going to mount the arm. Now the arm comes with Riga or Lin mount. Uh, this particular deck we've got is a Riga. And you'll notice that the hole here uh, is pre-cut for the arm. And it also has the addition of these three uh, new little holes. This is the, the, the Riga um, new style fitting, but we can also fit the Riga old style fitting nut underneath this. So we really have the option of using the three screws here uh, or the base nut on a Riga type deck. Um, now we also have a Lin Son deck um, board and this one's cut for the, the Lin arm uh, and we'll mount this too just to see the, the difference between the Riga and the Lin type mounts. Um, what we'll do is we'll turn the deck round so it's easier to work on and uh, we'll zoom in and let you see the, um, the, the, the different components um, together. Now this lets you see the difference between the two colour options. We've got a black finish and a silver finish. The arm we're going to be working on today is the silver one, but this is the, um, the, the sort of black finish just to let you get an idea of what this base section looks like in black. Uh, now you'll notice that we have six holes in the top section here, and we also have a threaded uh, pillar here. Uh, the threaded pillar can be used with a big nut uh, underneath here to tighten it up in the old Riga style. The new Riga style will use these three countersunk holes to line up with the little holes that are drilled underneath and we'll just use self-tappers for that. Um, or you could even use a combination of the three bolts at the top and the big nut at the bottom. It's really up to yourself whether you think you need the extra stability of the big nut. This is only really in a Riga arm. If we were going to use let's say a Lin type fitting arm, deck rather, uh, we would want the same fitting but what we would do is use the countersunk, rather than the countersunk holes, what we would do is use the um, pre-threaded uh, holes and three bolts to go from the bottom up. 
and these simply go in and get tightened up from the bottom. Uh, there is also a spring washer supplied that you can put in uh, just to keep the bolts tight once you tighten them and that's what the Lin assembly would be like and we're using the same mount here to do both jobs so if you've got a Riga deck this mount fits it and if you've got a, a Lin deck uh, the mount also fits that it's a very unusual feature to use one mounting to do both um, types of fittings now once this uh, mount's fitted to the deck we'll be using these two uh, little allen bolts to uh, get the height of the arm correct and just simply tighten them up when you've got the right height. The, the bolts are special in that they've got a plastic tip on the front and the plastic tip will um, not mark the, um, the collar. Uh, so it's important that you don't over tighten these, they just need a little nip up and the two of them added together will put a lot of pressure onto the arm without marking any of the shafts. This is important because you don't want your shaft to uh, be marked, it will start to feel tight in the hole. Um, so the, the, the little screws here protect the shaft. Okay, so we've got the silver arm mount ready to fit. We've got the cable underneath the deck. We've got the big nut through the cable. All we need to do is carefully put the nut up and then hold the mount in the correct position. You'll notice that we've got a screw here and another screw here for the height adjustment. We're going to put them to the back roughly about there, so we've got one here, one there and then tighten our big nut up carefully we'll only do it hand tight at the moment and then finish up by giving it a proper tighten but hand tight's fine, there we are, it's quite rigid and then we're going to put the bottom section of the arm in and that's fine, we'll tighten these up and then we'll go on with the, with the rest of the uh, assembly Okay, here's the arm mounted and all we need to do is just tighten up one of the bolts. I will lift the arm up a few millimetres and just tighten this little screw at the side. So that's the height more or less set just now before we go any further. You'll notice that at the um, centre of the pivot here we've got a special little jeweled bearing and this is quite delicate. It's a sapphire and when we're putting the top section of the arm on we've got to be careful we don't drop it on this, it is fa fairly fragile. And this is our anti-skate uh, hoop. The anti-skate weight we're going to have to um, hoop over this and the anti-skate weight will fall into this little hole. So when we're mounting the top section that's all we're going to be aiming for is not dropping it on the pivot and hooking the little thread through this um, little catcher here. So it's fairly easy to get the, the whole wand on and off the arm but uh, as I say this um, uh, bearing is very fragile so you don't want to drop the top section on. While we're here you can notice the 5 pin in connector from the arm, uh, the arm cune device and the clip that uh, we'll be using a lot when we're doing the setup. So um, that's us ready really now to um, put the wand section on. And here's a close up of the um, gemstone bearing and the tungsten tipped spike that we use. The gemstones here and this is your little um, uh, spike assembly which you'll notice goes to a very sharp point. Uh, so these are um, normally uh, in the arm, you won't uh, get access like this to see them but it's just like you get an idea uh, what we're talking about when I say the, um, the spike and the cup. Okay so we're ready to fit the wand, we could fit a cartridge first before we um, fit the wand on but I think it'd be more fun if we just assemble it up first and explain uh, a few of the, the, the rudimentaries and then we can go for actual um, mounting the cartridge. So basically the wand itself has got a protector sleeve over the anti-skate weight so we just simply take that off and a little weight will be free to move and what we're going to do is this little weight and the thread we want to loop them over and down as we're putting the spike into the cup. So it's a fairly easy operation once you've done it a few times so don't be scared to have a practice and what we're going to do is just simply get the thread over and put the pivot in the cup. Now I've missed the thread so that's probably quite lucky we can do that again just simply up and over. There we are, and that's us now on the pivot point. 
Now, you'll notice that the thread is uh, a little bit loose just now. That's fine. Uh, it's basically hitting the, the bottom of the, um, the mount. Uh, as we adjust the height up, that will become tighter. And uh, we'll do some adjustments later, but the thread is now loose, so that's good. This little bar here, as you can see, should hold the weight roughly in the middle of the hole when we've got the arm and the record. So you can see, uh, if we had to move this bar, it's just a simple case of bending it. There we are, it's moving on its wee pivot and back again. So just get that roughly in the middle. That's not too bad there. Uh, it means it won't hit off the side when you're using the arm. And this section that it's in just now also stops the weight vibrating a lot if it's on a sprung chassis. So it's quite handy that it cuts down the, um, the amount of movement in the weight if you've got a sprung chassis as well. So we've got the pivot on, we've got the thread through. Uh, we can, at any stage, connect our wires in. I won't push them down tightly just now, but uh, that's them roughly where they're going to be uh, finalised. You can move the wire here uh, if it hits your lid. Um, that's not a problem. If you've got any issues, just bend the wire out of the way. Um, and we're really more or less ready now to fit a cartridge. We'll talk about the rear weight and fitting the cartridge uh, next. Okay, so we've got our cartridge and our rear weight. Maybe this is a good time to talk about the Allen key set that you get with the arm as well. Um, you get a comprehensive little Allen key set. Uh, not all sizes are needed, but uh, it's nice to have them anyway. The main ones you'll use are the 1.3, which uh, adjusts the height of the arm cue bar here, if you want it up or down. Uh, the 1.5, uh, that will lock the rear weight. So that's going to be a handy one to, to get out. And we'll do that uh, just now. Um, and we've also got the little uh, cartridge screws with the head shell washers already mounted. And uh, just an old cartridge here to show you how to mount um, a cartridge. So um, let me just get the 1.5 millimeter Allen key that we'll be using to set the rear weight. Okay, so we've got a rear weight and we've got our Allen key now to adjust the rear weight. I'm just going to put it on the stub and uh, just nip it up so that it's firmly held. And it's just a simple case of a small nip. Round about the middle of this stub will be fine for a uh, test just now. And I'm going to put the arm clip on. Before you do any adjustments, always put the arm clip on. These arms are very frictionless and any weight or movement at the back is going to make the front move very quickly. So um, from this stage on onwards, uh, use the arm clip whenever you're doing any adjustments, just to avoid any little accidents. Uh, so what we're going to do now is mount the cartridge. And what I normally do, if a cartridge like this, you can mount one of the screws first and then slide the cartridge in, tighten the screw up, and then attack the fitting the wires. Uh, so we'll do that first, we'll get the screw, and once it's ready, we'll fit the cartridge in, and uh, we'll get the proper size Allen key for this. Okay, I'm using the two millimeter Allen key here, and I've fitted one of the bolts already. And all I need to do is just get the cartridge and basically slip it in. I've also fitted a head shell washer um, to the screw, so uh, that shouldn't mark the head shell. And I'm just going to carefully fit the cartridge in and just nip this up. And that's it relatively tight. I can still twist this round and that will enable me to get the, um, the cartridge tags on easily. Uh, now the top one on this is uh, furthest away top is white and the nearest is red. So let's just do those just now. Just simply push them on. You can use tweezers for this. And we've now got blue away. And green. Simply pushes on again. So we've got all four wires connected. Push up the back here, just to make sure the wires aren't trailing on the record surface. And then tighten up your, um, with the two millimeter Allen key, your little head shell screw. And we can now fit the second screw uh, without worrying about any problems. So it's just a case of simply putting the second screw in. And I've got a little head shell washer mounted already so I just need to get the nut at the bottom now and it's a tricky thing to do but we should be all right there we are and 
Now, mounting the cartridge initially, I'm just going to put the front of the head shell uh, flush with the front of the cartridge. And you'll notice there's a little tiny hole at the front of the head shell. That's ideally where you want the stylus to be under, just as a, a rough guideline. Uh, so if you look down just now at the side, the stylus is roughly just in front of that little hole. So I can move the, the two back once we get a protractor uh, just to justify that. But uh, I'll just do that just now and move it back a little fraction. And that should be good for testing with. Now we're going to have to get the weight correct before we do anything. We've got the rear weight mounted roughly in the middle of the stub. So we'll test that out and we'll see how light the arm is at the moment before we do anything. Okay, so we've got our rear weight roughly in the middle of the stub at the back. We're going to test the arm just now and see what the weight's like. And it feels a little bit light, but uh, certainly good for starting with. We'll move the rear weight a little bit further forward to make the cartridge heavier and then we'll get our digital scales and just check what we're running at. Okay, so before we do anything I'll um, just remove the anti-skate weight so it's not affecting our uh, readings and just leave that at the side of the arm. That should be fine there. So that's not adjusting any of the uh, forces that we're going to be testing with here. Just move that round. Uh, zero stylus scales. And I've got the stylus guard down just now just to Oh, we're well under there. So we need to move the rear weight towards uh, the bearing by about a millimetre or two. So we'll put that back in, clip on, simply put the rear weight screw a little bit tighter there and try it again. And we're at 0.8 now, so a little bit more. And that's about 1.4, so we're almost home. I'd recommend around about 1.5, 1.6 for this cartridge. So we're at 1.72. If I flip the stylus card up now, and be very careful, and we'll see exactly where it is. And with the stylus card up, it's 1.58, so 1.60. So that's quite good for uh, now starting to check the alignment and doing all the other adjustments. Uh, so that's where we'll go to next. Okay, so we've got our alignment protractor set up on the deck and we're using the AA line uh, to go through the bearing centre. So you can use a ruler above it or you can use your eye just looking straight up here. You want that bearing to be uh, in the centre of this line here. So you just simply adjust that until you get it roughly right. I've got the anti-skating weight uh, still disconnected so it's not influencing anything, should make it up a little bit easier. And ideally what we want to do is now check and see if this cartridge lines up uh, in this cross here. Uh, ideally we want the body of the cartridge and the stylus of the cartridge uh, to be parallel with these lines. So a little bit of adjustment at the head shell, forward or back will give you that uh, ideal position. We'll zoom in so you can actually see closely uh, how this is going to look. Okay, so here we have the um, uh, the cartridge actually on the uh, grids and everything's looking great. The head shell's square with the grid lines, the cartridge body's square with the grid, grid lines and the stylus has gone up the centre of the um, line here. So roughly in the middle of the head shell slots is where this particular cartridge is happiest. So that's our alignment checked and done. Uh, next we can go on to um, checking the arm height on the record and then we'll look at uh, the azimuth adjustment. Uh, so those two coming up next. Okay, so I've got a record on the platter. Um, I've got the weight adjusted for the cartridge so we're more or less ready to um, put the stylus into the groove and have a look at the arm height. Um, and the azimuth. The other thing is I've put the anti-skate weight back in position over the little loop and I'm just going to carefully move it across and put it on the record surface. There we are. Now the arm height we can look at from this angle and we'll see whether it's too high, too low or, or, or bang on. And the azimuth we can use the little head shell spirit level, one of these. Um, we can put that on top of the head shell here and that will tell us if the arm head shell needs to 
uh, be adjusted and we can do all that adjustment. So that's what we'll do next. We'll look in at side of the record here and we'll see if the arm height is too high or too low. Okay, and uh, we've adjusted the arm height down with this Allen key here and you'll now notice that the arm tube and the record surface are more or less parallel. So happy to leave that there and we'll go on to check in the azimuth. Okay, so we're ready to use the little bubble level. Uh, which doesn't weigh much, it's, it's about 0.3 of a gram. Uh, we can actually put that on the, the top of the head shell there. And we can adjust the rear weight to compensate for that, but uh, it doesn't weigh that much. So in this particular cartridge, I'm still within the, um, the normal operating uh, weight, um, which can go up to two grams. So um, that'll be fine to use it just now. What I'm gonna do is carefully put it onto the record and we'll see how the bubble lines up. It should be in the middle and it will tell us if the arm height is still out of fraction and if the azimuth is correct. Okay, so the azimuth, the left to right, um, seems pretty much perfect in this arm and the, um, the arm height is a fraction out. What we're needing there is to go a little bit lower at the back and that will give us the bubble right in the centre. So I'll lower the arm uh, another millimetre and we'll check it again. And that's the bubble more or less perfect in the middle. So we know the arm height's right, the azimuth's right. So we're more or less ready to um, revise all our settings, check all our bolts are tight and um, um, try it on a record uh, for real. But um, what we'll do now is just go over a few of the adjustments that we could have used for the azimuth. Okay, now um, I've got the needle still on the record just now, but um, this little weight down at the bottom here is your azimuth adjustment and as we move it out it makes this side of the arm heavier and it'll twist the, the whole arm round and as we move it back in towards the centre of the bearing uh, it makes this uh, left hand side lighter and this is to offset the cartridge weight which um, if it's a particularly heavy cartridge you might have to move this weight out further and a standard sort of uh, medium weight cartridge like this roughly where the weight is just now is usually fine. So you can adjust the azimuth by moving this weight and even removing it from the bar if you need less or we can supply an extra one if you need more, it just depends on your, the weight of your cartridge. So um, that's your azimuth adjustment, this little bar at the bottom and there's a 1.5 millimeter uh, grub screw uh, holds that in place. Now the five pin DIN connector I have pushed fully into the um, connector there so we're ready really to do an audio test and um, uh, make sure everything else works. One other thing I would like to point out is uh, we can check if the arm cue height is correct by simply lifting the arm up and that's lifting the arm about oh I don't know half an inch off the record and when it comes down we're going to check there's a little gap between the arm cue bar here and uh, the bottom of the arm cue and looking at it there's about uh, a one to two millimetre gap so that's fine so that's ideal basically when you get the arm everything like this the arm cue height all the adjustments the anti-skate uh, and the azimuth adjustment will be preset for you so basically you should be taken out of the box and more or less playing it without any of the sort of major adjustments just really your rear weight is going to be uh, the hardest thing you'll set okay just to wrap up the um, bottom of the, uh, the deck and the cable that exits from the arm uh, we could just simply use this little um, P-clip just now to hold the wire in place but what we're going to do is use a cable tie and uh, use the threaded part here around the arm just to take the strain away from the P-clip and make this section um, very rigid so that any um, cable mount in front of it here uh, isn't taking the full uh, strain of the cable. So what we're going to do is bend the cable up and put the cable tie around here and it should be a fairly simple little job. Um, now if we just hold that down and basically flip our cable tie over, I'll need both hands for this, so give me a second. Okay, so just tighten that up. And that's now pretty well connected. And what we'll do now is just get a little snip and tidy up that uh, connector. Okay, so that's a little connect a clip here fitted. We can now, if we wanted to, change the exit angle uh, by simply rotating the cable round 
uh, but where it was there was fine. On some decks, uh, maybe like a Lynn for example, you might want the angle of the cable going more across the deck. So just simply fold the cable up, put the, the little cable tie around, tighten it up and you're ready now to fit it to your P-clip and that will hold it in place without taking all the strain at the P-clip. So that's basically it on mounting the Uniarm. And just to let you see the black finish uh, in a more or less complete arm, uh, you can see it's a hard anodized black and a hard anodized silver finish that the arm comes in um, and is particularly hard wearing. So um, really um, you shouldn't be able to mark the arm easily. Uh, it's a very high uh, protective uh, coating that's put on top of the, the alloy surface.